Supercomputing is a key technology that can transform society and open the door to humanity's next stage of technological evolution. Many nations are prioritizing supercomputing R&D, including the US, Japan, the EU, Russia, and China. China, for example, has 188 entries on the June 2021 release of the top 500 most powerful supercomputers, with Tianhe 2A ranking 7th. Before that, Tianhe 2, Tianhe 3, and then Sunwei Taihu Light topped the list 10 consecutive times. Supercomputers seem to be a bit far from the lives of ordinary people. However, it is the foundation of the development of major countries and must be contested. At present, the latest concepts such as quantum computing have not achieved major breakthroughs, and large-scale applications are still far away. Therefore, supercomputers are still the peak of computing power that can be used by humans, not an outdated technology that will soon become obsolete. However, according to public data, the current computing power of Sunway Taihu Light is less than one-tenth of that of Frontier in the United States. Why is there such a big gap? Are Chinese supercomputers behind? What is the difference between supercomputing and quantum computing? How is quantum computing developing in China? Hi! Welcome to Tech Teller. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel, which is the encouragement that we can create more videos. Okay, let's move on to today's topic. There is no very clear definition of supercomputer. Generally speaking, supercomputing refers to those computers that can perform high-speed operations that ordinary personal computers cannot handle. On the list, the top-ranked American supercomputer, Frontier, has a peak computing speed of over 10 billion petaflops per second, and is the first supercomputer announced internationally to be able to perform 10 petaflops per second, referred to as E-class supercomputing. What does E-class supercomputing mean? Why are all countries making every effort to pursue the computing level of this order of magnitude? For example, E-class supercomputing is the goal of all countries at this stage. This level of magnitude can help countries solve the looming energy crisis and climate and environmental problems, such as nuclear energy. When superpowers such as China, the United States, and Russia possess nuclear weapons, the United States will conduct nuclear weapons experiments in some sea areas. However, the explosion of nuclear bombs will cause pollution and have an associated impact on the ocean and the global environment. Using supercomputers, scientists can conduct subcritical nuclear tests in the laboratory, with the same effect as a real nuclear test explosion, but also avoid many unpredictable negative legacy symptoms. Not only in the fields of energy and climate, but with ultra-fast reaction speed and calculation speed, supercomputers can perform more complex tasks, including scientific research such as exploration of the origin of the universe, observation of meteorological changes, decryption of encrypted data, oil exploration, engineering physics, nuclear weapons experiments and other highly sophisticated military experiments. Supercomputers are an important tool of a country. They can be used to predict earthquakes and tsunamis, they can replace humans in high-risk operations, they also play a very important role in the research of medicine and artificial intelligence. Because of these promising applications, E-class supercomputing is also considered a super arms race between major powers. The US Air Force and the Department of Energy are the end users of Frontier, and according to media reports, Frontier may first be used by the US military rather than in programs that benefit all of humanity. Since supercomputing is so helpful to the country's development, does China really lag behind in this field? The purpose of the Global Supercomputer 500 list is to promote the exchange and cooperation of the world's supercomputers. But just like scientists have national borders, this list is also a stage for countries to compete, and the things to consider are not only the outcome of the data. Take a look at the development process of Chinese supercomputers, and you will understand. 
In 1946, the world's first supercomputer was born in the United States, while China's first supercomputer was born in 1983. China started relatively late, but what foreign countries did not expect was the speed of China's rise. In November 2010, the supercomputer Tianhe, one developed by China reached the summit for the first time, sending its own voice to the world and keeping the record for about a year. In the second half of 2013, the supercomputer Tianhe, two developed by China reached the top again, and it remained the first in the next four rankings. At this time, an interesting thing happened, because the Tianhe, two used chip technology developed by Intel Corporation of the United States, so the United States imposed a chip embargo on China in 2015, trying to defeat China. Is its purpose fulfilled? Well, facts show that it still underestimates China. In June 2016, the Sunway Taihu Light of Chinese research ranked first in the world. This time, it did not use American chips at all, proving China's strength. Although the upgrade of Tianhe 2 has been affected, it has won the championship and runner-up together with the Sunway Taihu Light for four consecutive years. In this year's list, although China is temporarily unable to rank in the top five, according to the list, among the 500 supercomputers with the strongest computing performance in the world, the number of supercomputers deployed in China ranks first in the world, 173 units, accounting for 34.6% of the overall share. In addition, before the announcement of this ranking, the British Financial Times said that China has achieved E-level supercomputing before the United States. The first E-level supercomputing has been running for more than a year, but it has not participated in the ranking. Chinese companies are now more focused domestic competition, not what international rivals are doing. The New York Times also reported that in this competition for supercomputing, the frontier is no match for China's two computer systems, whose operators have not submit test results. In other words, it is not that China lagged behind in the rankings, but that it did not participate in the competition at all. After knowing the above information, let's take a look at another technology that has attracted much attention, quantum computing. How is this technology developing in China? Huawei President Ren Zhengfei once explained the importance of quantum computers, and Huawei is also investing in quantum computing. Of course, it is not only Huawei that has invested heavily. As a battleground for the development of science and technology in various countries in the future, quantum computers, like supercomputers, are a promising frontier that is related to national fortunes. China's potential and strength in the field of quantum computers should not be underestimated. Compared with classic computing, quantum computers will have greater value and unique advantages in some specific scenarios that require extremely high computing power. At present, China is the first country to build the quantum science satellite Mishus, and also the first country to build a quantum network, which connects Beijing and Shanghai with a total length of 4,600 kilometers. In addition, China is committed to creating the world's first and largest quantum laboratory. All in all, in China, quantum technology has become the focus of the 14th Five-Year Plan Development Strategy and has been mentioned many times in policy documents. In the future, whether it is supercomputing or quantum computing, I believe that China has the strength and confidence to climb to the top. Do you think so? Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas. Please keep following our channel and like our videos. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.